Welcome to Paul Programs, and today we're actually going to take a look at turn-based systems in role-playing games. So, give you some background, we'll be talking a little bit about tabletop games, how they handle turn order and things like that, then we'll also talk about, you know, your JRPGs, and then we'll talk about, like, Final Fantasy specific system, the active time battle, and then after we do that, We'll actually jump into some code and see how you can actually build your own pretty much turn-based system for a role-playing game. Alright, so the first game I actually want to talk about is Galaxy of Pen and Paper. This is a great way to talk about some of the concepts of turn-based battles that happen in tabletop role-playing games as well. So as you can see on the top, we actually have a bar with each of the characters and their turn order. Kind of similar to how, like, in Dungeons & Dragons, you may roll for your initiative when you first start battle. And then once the turn order is set, then each of the characters have an opportunity to take their turns, be it attack, dodge, or whatever. Um, in tabletop games, if you're not doing theater of mind, and you're actually on a map, you may actually move your character around and give them some kind of placement that would give your character advantage, hopefully. Um, and then you'd be able to make other moves and actions. And um, that gets a little bit more into action economy and having the ability to do several things. But this pretty much covers our turn-based system where you pretty much have a set order. All right. Next, I want to talk about pretty much our turn-based role-playing games like Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and so on and so forth. This actually has a very different battle system, unlike pretty much D&D &D and other ones where you have an order and set. Um, this one is pseudo real-time, where under the character Chrono here, you can see he has a bar that keeps charging up. So this lets you know like when it's his turn to actually take an action, and the enemies have the same bar, you just can't actually see them. Uh, Final Fantasies use this system in many of the games from Final Fantasy 4 up until Final Fantasy 9, and then they took a break with 12 and 11 because that was an MMO. But yeah, as you can see, time builds up, and then once the time bar is built up, that's when the player actually gets an opportunity to attack. Same with the enemies. And that's it. That's pretty much the gist of the Final Fantasy system, which tries to blend real time with turn base. So, in Persona games, your turn order is pretty much handled on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. So, it kind of takes the idea of Dungeons & Dragons where you have a turn order, but instead of it being set for the entire battle, it's dependent on your actual turns. And then Persona, especially in particular, has an ability for characters to actually double up their turns, so this way you can turn one's turn into many, or if you decide to speed up your character, that can end up changing your turn order for the next turn coming up. So there's a few games that have systems like this, but uh, Persona is definitely one of the games that takes full advantage of this kind of system. All right, so that was our quick look at some of the different types of turn-based systems you can actually implement in a game. So, now that we've actually talked about the different systems and how other games implement them, let's actually jump into Unity now and see how we can actually build our own turn-based system right now. Alright, so here we are in Unity. Um, as you can see, we have our scene set up. You can see our canvas, and in our canvas we have pretty much what represents each character. And within that, you're actually going to find an image and text. Um, which it'll handle the text will be the most important one because that's where we're actually going to be putting a lot of our value showing what turn order or how much time a character has built up. All right. And then we have our battle manager as well, which this is the brains of the operations basically. And you can see we mapped each of the text fields that are part of each of the characters on the canvas. Um, and then we also have our reset button for resetting everything and our toggle button mapped to the script as well. Um, and those will be important for jumping between like time battle or turn base or for resetting the whole thing. 
All right. Now we're in the code, the brains of the operations. So we can see how that battle manager actually works. Here you can see we have our text fields mapped in a pretty much an array of text fields, have our toggle, all the pretty much UI components mapped. Then we also have a way of tracking if it's a time battle or not. Um, we have a list of all the different characters that we'll actually be working with, and we'll talk more about that class later. And then here we have our start function, which we'll go through and it'll generate a character. And after that method generates a character, we add that character to our list. Simple enough. So then we're going to set battle turns, which we'll go through and set the turns for each of the characters. Um, time scales one, just to make sure everything's flowing one. Um, toggle, this will pretty much be set to let you know if the toggle is true or false. And we add a listener to see if the user toggles one way or the other. And we do the same with the reset button to see if a user actually clicks on the button. All right. Now we have our update. Pretty simple. If it's a time battle, it's going to add time to each of the players or each of the characters in this case. But the main thing is that it's actually going to loop through the characters in the method and then it's going to build up their time, time multiplied by their speed. Um, so this is what's going to actually increase the amount of time they build up every pretty much turn or every time this method's called. And then it's going to set that time to the actual text for display. All right. Now we have the change time toggle. This is pretty simple. Uh, basically, whenever you click on it, it'll swap the toggle to either true or false and reset all the player's turns or speeds and things like that. All right. Set battle turns. So this is going to call the generate turn order. Um, it's pretty much going to put the list in and get a list out, which will have all the characters' turns in the right order. And then it'll go through each of the characters and actually set what their turn order is and push that to their respective text fields. All right. And then reset stats. So like I was talking before, it's going to generate a character. It's going to set their text to basically what it was initially um, if it's time battle. And then it's going to set each of those to the respective character they should be on the list. And then after that, if it's not time battle, then it's going to actually set each of the character's turns. All right. And then this one is one of the more important ones. This actually creates the character. So we put it in the text field. We'll create a new character object, which we'll talk about in a bit. Set its speed, how much time it's built up, which is zero. Text field, and then its temporary battle turn order, which is zero at the moment. And then we actually return that new character. All right. And then the generate turns order. So this is actually a recursive method where we put in one list and then populate on second list. So what's going to happen is if our initial list is less than one, that means it's empty. It'll actually break out of the recursion pretty much loop. Um, and then it's going to set the highest character, the character with the highest speed to the first one and start at the next one in the list and it's going to pretty much go through and compare each character's speed and then whatever the highest character is it's going to add that to the ordered list and it'll remove that one at the previous at the original list basically at that index all right and then once it does that it'll call itself again and again, this will repeat until it gets to the top where there's only less than one or zero left in the original list, which will then pump out the new ordered list. All right. And then the last bit I want to talk about are the characters themselves. So they have all their pretty much attributes, which will be speed time built up the text field that we're going to output things onto and then pretty much their turn order so what turn they are in the list all right and then we have two real simple methods um pretty much the first one will output what their turn order is to the text field 
and just set that. Another one will output what time they've built up and put that to the text field. All right, and that pretty much covers all our code right there. Let's jump back in Unity and actually see this in action. All right, so now let's actually see how this thing works. So let's play and wait till it loads up. All right, cool. So now you can see that the turn order has been set when it initialized. And when you reset, turn order changes for each of the different characters that are represented. And again, you can keep resetting. This time actually came in perfect one, two, three, four, five order. And again, just mixes it up. But when you hit time battle, and as you can see, each of the characters are building up at a different pace. So you'll see like purple is going really fast. So it probably has the highest speed with green being second fastest. And then the others coming in similar order. And when you reset it, it's going to pretty much just change how who's faster than the others. And you can see that like blue and red are kind of building up fast. And again, rinse, repeat. So yeah. This pretty much is a look at how you can actually build a turn-based system in Unity for role-playing games. So hopefully this has been a good insightful look for everyone. All right, everybody. And with that, let's just say time's up. I kid, I kid. But thank everybody for watching. If you like this video and like to see more videos talking about how to build other mechanics that you may be interested in, let me know in a comment below. And basically like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching everyone and I will catch you all next time.